Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Guidance will resume now. Please proceed to the highlighted road. Daisies blooming Sundress swaying in the breeze I can't stop staring You've put a spell on me And I hope that you never decide to set me free The way you're moving It's got me moving my own feet feeling that I could ever dare to dream is you forever moving next to me let's not waste time or take this slow we've got miles behind us but miles to go so let's just break this down to the simplest truth Hi everybody, I'm Randy. And I'm Diane. And this is Zephyr Travels. And today we're coming to you from a really unique campsite. We're actually in a cow field. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no cows where we're at. There, right. It's a huge, it's an open range area. But we're staying at 43 Ranch. And this is an olive oil farm and it's part of the Harvest Host program. Now, if you don't know about Harvest Host or if you haven't signed up for it yet, you really should. We do have a link in our description. It will save you some money on uh, signing up, and it will give us a couple bucks back, too. So please use the link if you're going to sign up. Uh, but Harvest Host is a very unique um, organization that you join, and it allows you to stay at local businesses along your trip. And this one happens to be an olive oil uh, farm, but we've stayed at museums. We've stayed at wineries. We even stayed at a salt mine. So there's all kinds of different places that you can stop and stay at. This one happens to be a farm, which was really fun. Yeah, and they do give you a tour of how they manufacture olive oil. They not only grow the olives, but they manufacture them. Right, they press them and, and they, you know, make the oil out of them. And they do extra virgin olive oil, and we learned all about that. And we're going to show you some video of that tour right now. Forty-three Ranch, and you're in San Ardo, California, on uh, California's central coast. Olive oil basically comes in three grades. There is a, a there's a grade that's uh, produced in a refinery. Um, I just call that olive oil, uh, but it can be called olive tomas oil, um, light olive oil, pure olive oil, extra light olive oil. There's all kinds of names. They don't have the same. They don't mean the, as as much as what these two are. So extra virgin and virgin are grades of olive oil that are made in a cold press facility, which this is a cold press facility. Extra virgin and virgin, the highest grade is extra virgin. Mm -hmm. um, virgin is the next down and there's a pretty big drop off between extra virgin and virgin. So to get an extra virgin grading, 
um, we need to prove two things. We need to prove that the olives that we milled were fresh, and we need to prove that there are no defects in the oil. And defects are off flavors caused by problems in farming, milling, storage, or the supply chain. Extra virgin has been through a taste panel. They've found zero defects. Virgin can have up to three. Uh -huh. okay. Don't see this in the U.S. very much anymore. They come into this machine. This is our crusher. This motor spins a uh, four-headed flywheel with carbide hammers on it. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. It crushes the olives through a screen um, and turns the whole olive into a paste. Okay, so what we've done here is we've opened up all the flavor. We've crushed that olive. The paste is about the texture of oatmeal. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets pumped through and into one of our malaxers where we will stir that paste. And what we want is we want that uh, the oil to absorb all the flavors that we've liberated in the crushing process. The paste comes in here. Um, there's an auger that's on a differential grew, uh, gear in there. Um, and then there's some contouring to the, uh, to the chamber that's spinning. And basically what we're doing is Used to, you know, we used to call it cold pressing, uh -huh. right? We don't press anymore. Um, pressing used to take that olive mass, squeeze the liquid out of it, we'd catch the liquid. Um, centrifuges, we, we spin, and we throw the solids out right. uh, and capture the liquid. Liquids come up here. Um, they're basically spinning around up here, getting drained back towards the front. They come through the hose and into this tank. And from there, we pump up on top into that tank up there. We grab the feed through the pipe down into this machine. This is a vertical centrifuge now. We throw the water out of the oil. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so that's what happens here. And what we end up with that comes out of this top arm uh, into that bowl there is about 99% oil. So to have shelf stable extra virgin olive oil for the rest of the year, we filter that sediment out put it in uh, stainless steel tanks, uh, put an inert gas on top of it to keep air from getting to the oil. We mill our own, and then we mill for about 120 other small producers. Oh, wow. okay. Do you do any distribution locally? I sell everything here and online. Oh. oh okay. We make really good olive oil. We sell out every year. I am going to Start you off with this oil. Um, when we taste olive oil, we taste for three different components. We taste for a fruit component, a bitter component, and a pungent component. Okay? okay. And you'll get them in that order. You'll get a fruit flavor, a bitter flavor, and then pungency is a black pepper throat catching tickle that you'll you'll get at the back of your throat. This is a Greek variety of olive. It's called Koroniki. Um, we call this Miller's Choice this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it is a really delicate, uh, fruity olive oil. So go ahead and, and take that, smell it first. Um, mm -hmm. And with this oil, you're going to smell like tropical fruit. Yeah. Right? It's, mm -hmm. it's mangoes. Oh, okay. Okay. Taste. And the, ta the bitterness is going to be very light, um, mm -hmm. almost like a romaine lettuce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you'll get a little bit of pungency on the end of it. A little bit of a black pepper tickle, but very faint. And this is a, this is a really good example of a delicate olive. <coughs> so she even got a little, uh, she got a one cough out of it. <coughs> two, two coughs. Okay. okay. Fruity, um, a, a delicate white fish, butter lettuce. That's what you would kind of use this for. Okay. Um, uh, Greek olive, probably they probably put it on octopus. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then I'm gonna go all the way to the other end. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is my favorite olive. Um, this is a Spanish olive called Biqual. Um, with the drought that we've had in California, we've been getting more and more pungent uh, oils. Um, from a lot of different varieties, and Piquals one. I love pungent oil, so I'm not disappointed. How about that? Okay. Piqual does not have a tropical fruit flavor, so when you smell this, you're gonna ha smell leafy green. So go ahead, um, smell this. It is the fruit flavor uh, that we have on this, so we call tomato leaf. 
So if you've ever grown tomatoes, you pick those tomatoes, you stick your hand in that plant, that fruit flavor you're getting is like a tomato leaf. <coughs> so it is a more pungent oil. <coughs> She's gonna, that's three coughs. Let's see, we might get four. <laughs> then we do a blend and we wait. Uh, we just did the blend this week. Um, we wait to do the blend because we want to get we want to make our best oil with the blend is basically what it comes down to. So we use some of our Spanish, the Piquol. Mm -hmm. um, we grow three other Italian uh, olives, uh, Lucino, Luca, and Pendolino. They are frequently blended uh, because one of them has fruitiness, one of them has bitterness, one of them has pungency, and you want to have sort of an even fruit, bitterness, pungency. Um, there's even an olive in here. Uh, Luca that has a little bit of an unripe banana flavor oh. and you'll get a starchy feeling in your mouth that's a lot like unripe banana. I, li oh, yeah. I love your bravery because usually people once they get hit with pungency <laughs> they are done. <laughs> you are going, you are putting it, you are throwing it back. <laughs> He doesn't like. He doesn't eat owls. So you don't like the you don't like the pungency is, but you, it affects you. But you like it. Yeah, she okay. loves olives. Okay. Oh yeah, she puts olives on everything. Okay. Yeah. Flavored olive oils. I did not uh, talk about them over on that chart because they're not on that chart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, flavored olive oils usually are uh, virgin grade olive oil that people will use an extract to cover up the defects. Oh, okay. Right, so they'll flavor it with garlic, rosemary, truffle, um, any of the chili, jalapeno kinds of flavors to really cover up anything that they don't want people to taste. Um, we just do co-milling of fresh olives. So what we do to make this, I think you've got lemon there. Um, what we do is we buy, we do 200 pounds of fresh Meyer lemons mm -hmm. for every thousand pounds of olives and they go through that whole process together. So they go into the crusher. They go, they go through the wash plant into the crusher with the olives. They get crushed, malaxed, separated. And what you end up with is a, a, a citrusy, nice Meyer lemon flavor on your olive oil. Yeah, okay. Good if you want to do fish or veal piccata or chicken piccata or any sort of uh, ravioli dish that requires a lemon. I see. Okay. Yeah. No coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. You'll get it. It's got a little it's got it's got that uh, it's got a little pungency to it at the end. But what hopefully what you got is a little bit of that lemon. Yeah, and then you I also did. got a nice olive oil. And the last one Oop. Mandarin. Ooh. So this is mandarin oranges, same thing. Mm-hmm. Crushed in and you get a nice orange. This one is uh, great for citrus salads, um, beet salads. I put it on ice cream, vanilla ice cream. Really? Really. Wow. I know you have to try that. I, I rim my bourbon glass with it. Mmm. Mmm. That's yeah. good too. I can, I can taste the mandarin in this more than mm -hmm. I tasted the lemon. More than you taste lemon? Yeah. 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 And they do sell them to the public via their website. Yes. So what did you think of your night here? It was, it was really a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's unique. You're on top of a mountain, so the view is, you know, it's pretty spectacular. And it is. It's, it's wide open. You can park anywhere you want. It's a little drive, and they do escort you up to the top of the hill. But... It is. It's very nice and it's very well worth it. Yeah, and we ran into some other campers up here um, that were spending the night. And we ended up all having a campfire and, and sharing a glass of wine, which was really nice. The owners of the place actually came up and spent some time with us. And we got to meet some new people and talk to them. It was, it was a really a fun night. Right. So, yeah, like Randy said, and Harvest Hose is not exclusive just to one manufacturer. So if you have something different than uh, Airstream, anybody, anybody can join. Anybody can join. <laughs> it's easy for you to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only requirements are that you have to be self-contained, and that includes you know your bathroom facilities and your kitchen has to be inside the rig.
Um, you can't have a teardrop that has an outdoor kitchen. They don't typically allow that. But again, they are well worth a stop. Yeah, and they're not that expensive. It's a yearly membership. I can't tell you exactly what it is because it does change every year and it's a different. When you join up, you're locked in at that price. So what I'm paying is a little less than probably what you would pay if you were just signing into it. But it is a yearly subscription and it's really not that bad. Now they do re ask that you participate in whatever the host um, business is. So in this case, it was olive oil, so we bought some olive oil. If it was a winery, we would buy a couple bottles of wine um, and so on. If it's a museum, we would take the tour of the museum. So it's just, you know, courtesy. You know, this is how the host gets payback for allowing you to stay there. We mentioned cows. Uh, we found that our dogs like cows. Now, we've always known Monty likes cows. He always looks out the window at them. But apparently Zephyr likes to chase cows. And this morning, she chased the cows away from the campsite. Um, the owners allowed us to walk the dogs, or actually have the dogs off the, the leash on the property here. And so, I, even though I don't trust Monty off the leash, we do trust Zephyr off the leash. And she saw the cows and took off like a rocket after them. And she didn't bark at them, but she just chased them away. Kept chasing <laughs> them and chasing them, and she went farther and farther and farther. Um, she eventually, you know, heard me calling and came back. But that was uh, a surprise. Yeah, I mean, she likes to chase things at home, rabbits and squirrels. Neighbor's cat. Right, and uh, so we really never knew about her relationship with cows. Yeah. So we're not quite sure if she likes them or just viewed them as something more to chase. Right, but maybe we, she just wanted to get close and they ran so she followed. Yeah, but we do know that Monty likes cows. Yes. He knows the word cows, he likes to see cows. So. Yeah, yep, that's true. Well, we got to continue our journey. Um, Harvest House are usually only a one night uh, stay. And so we need to head on to our next place where we're, where we're headed to. Yeah, that, that's really cryptic, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, on to our next destination. Thank you, <laughs> saved me. Yep, so you have to wait and see that in the next video, but until the next time, what should they do? If you like this video, Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and hit the bell for notifications. We post new videos on a weekly basis and we'd love to have you follow along on our journey. So until next time, we'll see you guys down the road. Bye guys. Bye. Okay. And I don't even know where we're at. Do you know where we're at? San Ardo, California on uh, California's central coast. And what was the name of the harvest host? The mill at 43 Ranch and you're in San Ardo, California. Okay. Okay. It is recording, so we can start.